So I'm logged into Dynamics 365, and Dynamics 365 has lots of capabilities within it. You're able to manage everything all the way from marketing to sales to actually executing on the different projects um, that come from those different sales, as well as other projects that may come from IT and, and other departments as well, all the way into field service where you can handle ad hoc requests into service management where you can track cases and support tickets coming from both internal and external customers and then even getting feedback from your customers on this whole process and, and how it went um, to be able to take that feedback and, and do it better the next time and continuously improve. Today though we're just going to focus in on the project service area um, and take a quick look at some of the capabilities within there and how you can utilize it to manage your projects. So. Um, a lot of times a project will spawn from an opportunity and so we have different opportunities like say our VoIP phones opportunity here and um, once we win this particular opportunity this will create a project for us. So this is one input of projects into the project service within Dynamics 365. So we come down here, we can see we have a quote, and once that quote is won, then that'll actually create a related project here um, like this VoIP phones project. So once we go into that there, we can now see that this project has been created based off of that quote. Uh, it will notify then, um, you know, whoever's in charge of these new projects that are coming so that they can, you know, like create a project manager and start staffing it and things of that nature. And right from here, I can see that quote that came in and I can um, get information, you know, around, you know, what did we actually sell? Now, projects could just flow into my projects list here from other departments and other areas. They don't necessarily have to come from opportunities and be related to um, sales engagements. From there, um, we can prioritize the projects that we don't necessarily have to do, but we want to verify that they're going to give us value and the most bang for the buck. So I can actually pop open my project prioritization here and I can come in and I can do scenarios around, okay, we have limited dollars and we have limited resources and we need to figure out which projects are gonna give us the most value, we can say, okay, I got $4 million here. Based off of the amount of value that I specified these projects are gonna give us, benefits and improving employee satisfaction, reducing costs and all these things that I would have put in beforehand, it's now telling me that, hey, you should do these projects, that's gonna give you 66% of the value. Uh, if you do not do those projects, right, that's gonna be the best mix for $4 million that's gonna get you the most value. But then you can say, well, what if I have $5 million and start to create some what if scenarios and go, okay, now we can do 87%. From there, you can then take a look at resources and not only look at do we have the dollars to do it, but do we have the resources to do it as well and figure out what you can do with your resources. You can move lower priority projects out to help with your resourcing issues. And you can also say, well, what if we hire resources? I'm gonna hire you know, eight people and see how that affects it. My 62% of value um, will now go up because we're gonna bump some more projects in. Now we can do 80%. So we can really utilize this to, to figure out which projects can we do and do some high level planning also from a resource perspective to figure out you know, where should we be putting our people and how are we gonna get this work actually done with the people that we have. From there, then we can start to execute on those projects. So if I jump back into my VoIP phones project here, the first thing that I might want to do is build a, a high level schedule. And so to do that, I'm going to pop into my work breakdown structure here, which is going to pop open the online planner with inside of project service. And I can see I created some high level tasks and I can link these tasks together. There's a nice Gantt built in. I can assign either named resources or generics. Um, and from here, I can generate my project team, which then kind of takes me into the resource management aspect of the tool. So jumping into my team members here, I've already got some of my people fulfilled and, and ready to work on my project, but I still have a generic developer role that I have not yet fulfilled. So meaning I need to find an actual developer to do this work. I just have this developer placeholder here right now. To do that, I can either submit a request to a resource manager for them to go in and find someone who's available with the right skills and such, or if I have permissions to do so and our process dictates so, I can just do it as myself by hitting hard book here. That's going to pull up my resource booking view. I can see it's already filtering for developers. So I can see all the different developers here that we have in our resource pool. Some of them are already booked up. If they show as red, then they're over allocated in that period of time. So we want to stay away from them for sure. Some people don't really have anything going on. They look like um, good applicants. 
But then I can filter this down even more and say, well, I really need someone with .NET skills. And I don't want them just to be good at that. I want them to be proficient at it. So I can hit apply. Now we're looking at just the developers who are very proficient in .NET. I can see um, one person here is not available. Other person, Reed here, is completely available. If I hover over him, it'll give me some more information around what his skills are, what his availability is, what's his target utilization, you know, costs, things of that nature. And if that's all a good fit, great. I can grab him and say book. And now that's going to replace him on my project. So I can staff my project um, utilizing the tool. It makes it really easy to find the right people with the right skills who are also ready to go and available for that particular period of time. From there then, switching to more of a team member, I can as a team member, and you know, I just got assigned to this new project, I can come in and I can see which projects I'm booked on and which tasks that I'm expected to work on um, for those particular projects. And if I click on that, then I can come in here and I can update status and update my remaining hours and such, which all flows back to the project manager who's managing that project. I can also put in my timesheet. So if I come here at the end of the week, I've been working on all these different projects. I can come in and I can enter my time in here on those different projects, which again all rolls back to those projects so that the project manager can see those hours and costs and such um, building up over time, make sure that we're keeping it on track. So what does that look like from a project manager perspective? So I'm going to go ahead and switch back over into my projects here, and I'm going to go back into my VoIP phones project. <clears throat> and there's a project status view in here that allows you to create different status reports. And so as those timesheet hours roll back up from the timesheet, you know, I can see my actual hours and my remaining hours coming in here. So I can keep track of how we are from a work perspective. From a cost perspective, if you're tracking costs in here, you can see how that's working as well to make sure you're not over or under what you had planned on being at this point in time. And if this project's generating revenue, you can even track that as well, especially important in service organizations where the projects that they're executing on a lot of times generate direct revenue back to the business that affect the bottom line, right? But I also have other information in here, things around schedule status. Um, I can come and put some narrative in here around this project. You know, what work was performed this period, put some narrative in here that will then roll up to management that they can see in different status reports and such. What's planned for next period and any other comments that I have around the status of this project. I can track risks in here. I can track issues and changes. Um, and then once I get all of my information together for the week and I want to kind of generate my status report, all I have to do is hit my plus button here. It'll copy all that information into my status report for me and then I can see a running history over time of all my status reports and how the status has changed over time. You can then even get into more costs and schedule type performance charts and such to see how we're doing over time or by different groups of people. And this can be all configured so you can kind of see the types of things that you want to be able to see within the system. From there, um, I can then more as a manager come and look at views like resource utilization. We want to make sure that we're utilizing our resources properly. In most organizations, that's the most expensive thing is the people who work for your company. And you want to make sure you're utilizing them properly um, so that you're getting the most bang for your buck, the most value out of your resources you can. So you can come in, you can search for people. I could filter this down for, you know, specific roles or specific groups and things of that nature and see, you know, who's making their utilization targets and who's not and keep track of all of that from one nice, very simple, easy to read view here. From there, there's also lots of other dashboards and reports that we can take a look at to get visibility into this whole process from start to finish and all the different aspects of it. So I can come in here and I'm going to flip to my portfolio status dashboard. And in my portfolio status dashboard, I can quickly see high level overview of all of my projects, what status they're in, meaning from um, some of my projects have a, a green ranking, some of them are red, so we have some projects that are off track here, some are yellow at risk, cost status, schedule status, and so on. And if I click on one of these visuals, like say my um, portfolio status visual down there below, then it'll pop open this report where I can now get a little bit more analytical. I can see that, okay, here are all the projects grouped by portfolio, and I can see the status of these projects from an overall schedule, work health, resource health, et cetera, perspective. 
three of these projects are at risk. 22 are over budget, 22 are behind schedule. We have some active risks and some overdue issues here. And from here, we can start to filter this down though. I just wanna look at all the projects for a specific portfolio, let's say. I can come in and focus on my cutting cost portfolio of all my cost cutting projects. Or I just wanna look at my service projects. I can come in and just focus on those, right? You can focus in on wherever you want. Um, maybe I just want to look at all the projects that are having problems where overall health is either red or yellow and just focus in on those. Figure out the right mix of projects you want to see here and then we can start drilling into all the details of those projects. I can drill into the schedule details, see how far are we off from a schedule perspective, what's our duration variance here, how far are we off. Some of them are really far off, some of them are not so far off and start to get a better idea of that. We can look at a timeline across these. I can look into costs, you know, budgets versus actual costs, what's remaining. Costs over time, and a lot of these reports are even drilling capable. So for example, I can come here and I can see budget versus actual cost by quarter across these different projects I'm looking at. But if I click on one, it'll then drill into that quarter and then show me by month, and I could then go down to by day or at whatever level I really want. So the great thing about these reports is they allow you to start at a really high level and you know just an overview of say your whole portfolio of projects and drill all the way down into specific days of costs or months or, or whatever makes the most sense, right? I can look at work. We estimated we were going to spend this much time. We actually spent this much time. What's remaining and how far off are we? You know, those types of things. Work over time as well as risks and issues across all of these different projects. So we can get visibility, we can help escalate these issues and make sure that we're getting them taken care of so we can keep our projects on track, on time, on budget, et cetera. <clears throat> There are lots of other reports and dashboards in here as well, and I won't go into all of them right now, but um, another one that's pretty popular and very valuable that people generally use is the resource dashboard. So this is going to give me visibility into my resources, and I can figure out who's available, who's not, who's being utilized, um, you know, those types of things, and really get more visibility into my resources and how they're doing. There's also project status reports in here. There's timesheet reports in here. There's all different types of reports so you can get visibility into all aspects of your project. By the way, these reports, many of them are built on top of Power BI. So if you have executives um, and they don't necessarily need to go get into the details, we can send them into Power BI or we can deliver reports from Power BI um, via multiple different methods to them, um, scheduled or not and allow them to be able to get access to this information much more easily and in real time as things change. So for example, let's say I'm in charge of our services organization and I come in, I can come in and see a dashboard here with key KPIs and metrics and information that I'm interested in, you know, gross margin across different business units, targets versus actuals by people, you know, whatever you might want, right? Um, we have full report packs out of the box you can start from as well as we can configure these and create new reports to show the types of things you want to see. But even better than that, we can allow people to, in an ad hoc method, create their own charts and reports and visualizations. The way I can do that is I simply just come in and I can click here and I can type in a question. So let's say I want to show um, gross margin. And notice as I'm typing, it's creating, it's showing some different visuals down here that kind of keep changing. And it's also suggesting to me different fields that I might want to use um, as I'm putting this in so that I don't really have to be the most technical user. I can be more of just a business user. And I just want to see gross margin, let's say, by customer. <clears throat> And after I do that, it creates this nice visual for me here, showing my gross margin by customer. I can see my highest, uh, my customer with the highest gross margin is Global Chem, you know, those types of things. And from here, I can change it. You know what? I want that to be a pie chart. I just type in pie, now it's a pie chart. Or I just want a list view. I can just type in list, and now it's a list view. Um, so it makes it really quick and easy to come in and get things the way you want it. Let's say we want to do a column chart instead. Um, instead of a bar chart. From there, if you want, you can expand this over here and you can change fonts and sizes and colors and you know all kinds of things like that and get a little bit more detailed. Um, but Or if this is what you want, you're good with it to go, great. Then you can pin this back to your dashboard and you've now created this brand new report just by simply typing in a question here and not having to do a lot of work. So there's a lot of power of having all that data in one place and being able to give people um, rich visuals, dashboards, and reports into what's going on so they can make better decisions and make sure that we're keeping all of our projects and our resources on track 
um, you know, on budget and, and so on and so forth. So hopefully you can see um, the power of project service um, and Power BI tied together so that you can get a, a really rich experience around managing really all of your projects within your organization.